Well, hello folks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do in-field form validation with the TronGate framework. So the idea here is we have a form. Now, let's imagine that I make a mess of the form. I'll just do something like that. So I've left out the first name and the email address. Now, normally if I hit submit, you'll see some red text at the top of the page with some validation errors. But what this does is it gives you something like this. As you can see, it's a lot more descriptive and I just think it's a better overall experience. So this is what we're going to be making in this video. Now, in order for this to work, you are going to need to have TronGate version 1.3.3036 or higher. And by the way, this video kind of comes in two parts. For the first part of the video, I'm going to just be building a basic module. Nothing new there. If you want to fast forward and just look at the new stuff and see how this kind of thing's actually done, then just head straight to the timestamp shown on the screen. That's when the new stuff starts, okay? So if you want to do that, do that. But if you want to follow the full tutorial, that's cool as well. Okay, here we go. Now, I've got a little starter app here, and I'm going to just manually go through this, okay? So I'm going to go into Modules, and I'm going to make a new folder called, how about something like Students, okay? And like any decent module, it's going to have a Controllers folder, and it's going to have a Views folder. So I'm going to open up Controllers, and in there, I'm going to create a PHP file called students.php. Now look out for the uppercase S there in the file name. It's kind of important. So now we're going to do some opening PHP tags and we're going to say class students extends trongate. And then we'll do a little create method here. And I'm going to just say data equals this and I'll call upon get data from post. So, I'll build a little method down here. This will be useful, hopefully. Get data from post. And this is going to just build up an array of posted data. So, for example, we could say data first name is post first name. And we can add a little comma true. Comma true just puts it through strip tags and also puts it through the trim function. These are both inbuilt PHP things. So we'll have first name, let's have last name, and let's have email address. Okay, so this little method here is just fetching a bunch of data, creating an array, and then we're returning it. That's all we're doing there, okay? So now I'm going to say data now, you can say view module if you want. That's kind of optional. I'll just say it. Doesn't do any harm. But what we really want is data view file. Now, obviously, I've said view module is students. But the view file is going to be called create. And then I'm going to load up a template. And as luck would have it, TronGate comes with two templates out of the box. One called admin and another called public. I'm going to use the public template for no particular reason. And I'm going to pass in the data. Okay? So now let's go into views. We'll have a new file called create.php. And I'm going to just do a little headline that says something like create new record. We'll have a paragraph. Please fill out the form below and then hit Submit. So if we now navigate to students forward slash create, you'll see a page that looks a little bit like this. So let's build a form. I'm going to go into PHP. I'm going to say form open. Now the location for this form is going to be students forward slash submit. I'll do a little form close. And now we'll do the actual form itself. So we'll start with a form label that says first name. Then I'm going to say form input. We're going to have a name of first name, a value of whatever was passed in. And how about a little 
uh, array with a placeholder that says enter first name here, whatever. All right. So that's going to give us a form on this page here that looks like that, right? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. So let's do the other form fields. I'll space it out just for clarity. So as well as first name, of course, we'll have last name. So that would be like that. And that would say enter last name here. And finally, we'll have email address. So right here and here, it's email address. Enter email address here. And if you want to be super cool, instead of saying form input, we can say form email and save. And what that does is, well, if we add in a submit button, so I'll just echo form submit. So it's going to have a name of submit and a value of submit like this. And what the email address thing does is if we fill out a form and hit submit, but it's not an email address, you can see what's happening here. I'll zoom you in. So that's what form email does, right? Now, when we submit this, it's going to go to students forward slash submit. At the moment, we don't have that. So let's just make it right now. You can chuck it any, anywhere you want. I'll just have it at the top here for no particular reason. And we're going to just do a little bit of form validation. So we call upon the validation helper and we're going to set rules. So the way we do this is we say, pardon me, <laughs> we say set rules. We chuck in three arguments. The first one is the form field name. In this case, it's first underscore name. Then we do the form field label. So that might be the two words first name. And then we do the actual validation rules. I'll just say something like required, maybe even a little min length of three. Okay, so that's one bunch of validation rules for the first name. Let's do the same for the last name. So something like this. And then we'll do one more for email address. So uh, that would just be email space address. And for this one, I'll just say required and then valid underscore email. Okay, so that's all of the validation rules now declared. So to run this, we are going to have our result coming in from the validation helper. And on the validation helper, we're going to invoke run. Okay, so that's going to run our validation rules up here and it's going to return either true or false. Now, if the result is true, well, show time at the Apollo. Maybe we'll say something like data is this, get data from post. Normally, now comment it out, but you might do something like insert the data, maybe echo well done, whatever, you know, that's what might normally happen, something like that. But if things are not cool, so if we did not pass the validation, well, I'm going to just load up create again. And on create, I'll just chuck in under the headline, validation errors like that inside these PHP short tags. Now let's save and we'll go back to our form and we'll give this a little try. So if we submit, there's our validation errors, and there's no surprises here. You'll also notice that it does remember whatever you've typed in if there's an error. Now, everything we've had here so far is kind of normal. You know, this is normal stuff, and it should not be new for anyone who is familiar with Trongate. But let's imagine that, and I'll just say first name is David, and I'll leave the C like this, okay? And let's imagine that instead of having the errors up here, maybe we'll do two errors, right? Instead of having this, and then they have to scroll down, what if we wanted the errors to appear 
in the individual form fields? Well, it's actually a very simple three-step process. Step one, remove validation errors like that on the form page. Step two, for each and every form field where you would like validation errors to appear, we're going to echo validation errors. So it's the same old thing that we've used before. The only difference is this time we are passing in an argument. The argument is the name of the form field like that. So we'll say validation errors first name, validation errors last name. Now you can have them anywhere that you like and validation errors, email address, okay? So that's two steps so far. We removed validation errors from the top and we're now doing these individual validation errors. Now, let's just save and we'll submit this again. And now, as you can see, the errors are appearing beside the individual form fields. But we can go a little bit further. You see, I said it was a three-step process, we've only done two, so the final step is we're going to go to this form opening tag here. So this generates a form opening tag. And we're going to add in a class, just a little CSS class. We can do it like this. So we can have an array with a class, and the name of the class is going to be Highlight Errors. That's all it is. Okay, now save that. And now if we hit submit, you'll see that we have this fabulous page here. And it's just a little bit clearer than what we had before. So that's how you do infield errors. And uh, you'll see this thing goes away if we do that. And it's just an alternative way of displaying form validation errors. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon.